Hello guys and welcome to our another video. It is a pity that we got interrupted earlier by the power cut. But I also was a bit of an idiot by trying to talk too much instead of trying to conserve time. But now we are here. It's a pity this question paper is also missing most of the questions. So all I have here is just the little bit that remains of it. Now we are going to try and get it moving and see where, where we are going to to get to. But I hope that this one gets us somewhere as well. I've just skimmed this paper, I mean this question as well. I thought I was going to just not do it. But it became a bit nicer, the way they phrased the questions and how they constructed the questions. So I felt it is worth sharing it. Okay, enough of the nonsensical, uh, okay, it's not nonsensical, but I like my Russian and Ukrainian friends. Um, along my walks in life, I had met someone who was a Mr. Matzevich from Ukraine. So he had this... Uh, uh, accent. Uh, we are trying uh, to do our best here. So yeah, that is just the inspiration for the talking uh, like that. Uh, but uh, we are going to do our magic, aren't we? Because we are the magicians, I think. Or well, at least I believe so. But you will tell me what you think of this belief. Is it correct or is it wrong? Either way, we have just said it, that we are magicians. Okay, guys, enough of the ball. Okay, now we just want to give you a little bit more. I mean, a little bit more, just a little bit more. It doesn't have to be too much, but it's just a little bit more. Um, this is Euclidean geometry, by the way, so it's missing a greater portion of it. So we just only have this piece on this paper. I don't know what happened to Sternmore Physics. It's usually very reliable on these papers, but whoever gave them this paper probably made a mistake here. When they were trying to maybe scan these ones, they didn't scan the other questions. Maybe it was a back-to-back -back type of a question. Maybe that's how it got lost and all that. Anyway, it's not a big deal. Let us look into this situation right here. Question 10 reads, in the diagram, V, W, Q, R, and T are points on a circle. Now, what do we know about points on a circle? There are how many? One, two, three, four, five. So this is a polygon. It's not a quadrilateral, which sometimes we like it when it's a quadrilateral, but this one is a polynomial. Okay, not a polynomial. It's a polygon. We use the word polygon when it has many sides. But even a quadrilateral is a polygon, you know? Yeah, but these points, how many are they? One, two, three, four, five. So it means these points, when they are on the circle, we say they are concyclic. That is the term. So if ever they form the quadrilateral, we will say they, there is a cyclic quad, but the points themselves are termed concyclic. So meaning they are at circumference of a circle. Now, PT is a tangent to the circle at Q. So there is our PT, and it is the tangent at Q. All right, great stuff. And then, that is also a statement to make sure it stands out somehow, so that you don't uh, mess it up a bit, okay? Now, chord RW is produced. Once you hear that word produced, I like to hear, I like to hear it because if I don't hear it and yet I am given a line that seems to extend another line, I get worried because that line may well be angulated and therefore it's very difficult to assume certain things I want to assume. Now, once I'm told that RW, there is RW and then it's produced to P, okay, to meet the tangent at P. So this essentially tells me this is a straight line and if this is a straight line, I'm looking at a triangular structure over there. I'm also looking at a quadrilateral over there. So this would essentially tell me that I have an exterior angle of this triangle S, SRW or an exterior angle of this quadrilateral WVTR. And of course, if it has those vertices at circumference, it is itself a cyclic quad. 
So do you see, although they gave us concyclic points that did not necessarily give us a cyclic quad, but knowing that there's a quad RW, it actually created a cyclic quad RWVT. So now we are happy that, okay, with just this little piece of information, we know that that angle is definitely going to be equal to that angle over there. Why is that? Well, exterior angle of a cyclic quad. So it, although it's not stated, but the diagram implies it, and it is so. All right, not a big deal. So you don't have other properties. Of course, opposite angles are supplementary. That one is catered for in any cyclic quad, but the others where you have a bow tie angles in the same segment, we don't have it here. So we won't enjoy that one as well. So greatly. Now we know that this is a chord again, so it makes a triangular structure here. So we also have a situation that says to you and I, well guys, if you look closely, we were told this is the tangent. So the angle between the tangent and a chord, although they didn't mention it, but it should be a chord, is going to be equal to the angle subtended by that chord at circumference. So the angle between the tangent and the chord is the angle is equal to the angle subtended by that chord at circumference or the angle in the alternate segment. So you see, we have a few equalities here. And then of course, it's not over here. Eh? Yeah, it's far from over, man. Now the other one that we can tell is that since we've established we have a cyclic quad, we know that this angle here, let's just make it double line so that it becomes a bit visible is going to be equal to that angle over there. Again, that's an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. But we didn't read much about whether this is a straight line. Maybe it's very dangerous. Let's, let's read on. We didn't read to this far. So they're telling us that now, okay, uh, S is a point outside the circle such that PS is parallel to VT. Okay, that is all we have so far. And then chord RT chord RT is produced. There is our magical statement. Once you hear that word is what you want to hear definitely when I wanted to use my little theory here. So once I hear that these two chords and V and WV, they are produced to meet at S. So that means I'm correct to go about it that way. And then of course, what else can we do guys? So you always work your diagram like in the best way possible because it will benefit you to do so. Not doing so may prove very catastrophic. You don't have time. Sometimes you don't see even a very simple thing in front of you because of stress and you know when especially when you're out of time by the time you do such questions they can seriously mess up quite a very good performance you may have had at the beginning of your 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 thing there. Okay guys, now what is the other story? Since we know that these are parallel lines like that, so we also know that this angle here should be equal to that. These are alternate angles. It's my famous name, Zama. So there's a Z there. Okay? So those are alternate angles. We are in a good position. What else? You just want to escalate it. You must escalate. You know, when people are unhappy with some service somewhere, they'll be like, uh, I want to escalate it. So let's escalate it a bit. Since that we're in that mode of parallel lines, you know that T2 is also going to be equal to this whole angle here. That is S1 and 2 is going to be equal to that one. Again, what is that? The letter F with those arms being parallel. So those are corresponding angles. Of course, you don't want to botch your diagram too much so that you end up not seeing what you're supposed to see. So you want to keep it clean so that you can keep working with it even for other reasons before it gets a bit too messy. But I think at this point, in essence, the information provided has been well interpreted and in a much cleaner manner so it doesn't create too much uh, 
uh, color in, in, in the sketch. So let's look at the questions and answer them as we go along. Of course, you will develop a way of not wasting time, but at the same time being effective, which is what we want, guys. Effectiveness. Hey, you can see the power cards are telling us that we have effective, sorry, ineffective deployees or employees by the government. They really don't know how to do their job. But anyway, it's not surprising. We know why they are the way they are. Where are their qualifications? Two, have they done anything with those qualifications before they were put in there? Well, that's another question because qualifications is another thing. But have you done anything with those qualifications? to then be put in a position where we can say we rely on you. How can you rely on someone who just has, say, distinctions? I mean, you can get distinctions, it's all right. It's a good thing, step number one. That's a stepping stone, it's nothing on its own. But have you achieved something practical with those distinctions? In a reliable manner, in a constant manner, so that we can say that, okay, you've constantly or consistently shown that you are capable because wherever you've gone we can see that your track record is essentially good in that you've turned things around of course if you could not turn them around at least you kept them going you found them moving you kept them moving but if they collapse at your arrival that's a bad sign but now we have people who have systems that collapse at their arrival but you find them still being moved around to yet other offices. That's why we are here. Hey, I'm not politicizing, guys. I'm sorry, but it's just another issue which bends in my brain and it causes me to itch under my arms. I feel like punching someone in that government of ours, but yeah, you can't. They will squash you like a cockroach because you know what? They are connected. They are connected. They are connected so you try to punch one they will come in numbers but i wish i had a witch's power you know a witch can just bewitch all those people but for the right reasons you know bewitch them to do good instead of bewitching them and making them crazy or anything i think that is the only solution at this point that can give us quick solutions to our problems but now witches only practice witchcraft to destroy and damage things but the sad thing is also that they don't gain anything out of it hey can't you see such a magical power you just misuse it not even for your own good anyway too much nonsense hey, this guy i'm sure you guys are already angry with me for this anyway let's do it prove giving reasons that angle s1 mm-hmm is equal to angle R1. See, you've done all the work already. Three marks is in the bag. And trust me, that becomes a smile in your face because you already know how they are connected. First of all, you can say, well, 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 I know for a fact that um, angle R1 is equal to angle V1. Ne. R1 is equal to V1. It doesn't matter. You can start there and come here and then they, it's okay. Okay, what am I going to say is the, is the reason. This is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Ne. Yeah, it is so. I can go on and say, but... Hold on, what is that for now? What is the hesitancy? I also know that angle V1 is equal to angle S1. Hmm, is that interesting? Why are you saying that, mister? These are alternate angles. Of course, you always state the set of parallel lines. I know that PS is parallel to VT. That was given, you don't have to say it is given again. They know it. Then I can make my conclusion. Therefore, and therefore, S1 is equal to R1. Of course, that is sorted. 
because if you like you can say each is equal to v1 but this is quite evident you, ba you basically do not really need that one but because this is a three mark question why not consider that a mark because it is definitely a proper connection. Remember things need to be connected here but the good thing is please don't be haphazard when you're answering your maths paper or any paper for that matter. Try to be systematic. Make it palatable even when you don't get it right. Do you know someone because they can see your attempt to present your work in a very you know agreeable manner, very lovely manner. You may just find yourself getting a mark that you did not get naturally but just because of you know we reward good effort not necessarily you have to really 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 be absolutely untouchable but you know if you show that there's something in you no one would want to sink even when you're sinking they'll try to surface you right right but I'm not saying they're gonna give you free marks but it's possible you can get it Sometimes you can get that 98 and miss 2 to 100%. If your work is lovely and it's orderly, someone is just saying, I ah, so give that one 100%. Yeah, why not? They deserve it. They show that they are there. They can actually take it there, if only, if only. All right, guys, so we are told now, prove that PQ squared. Now, where is that side? Is this side here? PQ is this side. Okay, let's just highlight it with my other pens, so to speak. So this is my PQ here. Of course, I'm not trying to redraw this, but I'm just trying to highlight. Where is that? But now this side is squared equals PW. Where is that PW? PW WWE. Hey, we used to love wrestling, man. We would talk about it during break at Ngumbolo Compre Comprehensive School in Guatemala Springs. Huh? That's why I did my matric, man. Ah, my friends and I during lunch would be sitting there eating a quarter, talking about WWE Smackdown and WWE Raw and there was also that one what was Velocity WWE Velocity Ish. those are the days man now things are boring it's just all crap on TV man. yeah I don't even want to say what is wrong about it but there's just so much wrong no inspiration for nothing good at all it's all the bad things anyway cares now we know that this is going to be PW, so it's there, and then PR, so PR is this one, the green line, okay, I'm just going to overlay it over here, PR continues, so these lines, I know they don't look exactly as nicely out outlined as I want, but yeah, we're getting there somewhere. So do you see guys what is going on here? You can tell that this triangle is involved and maybe this one. Of course, once you see a squared, this side is common to which two triangles? This triangle here. This one here. Listen here, listen here. Ah, it's not gonna be the nice color, eh? Yeah, it's not gonna be the nicest of colors, but it's this triangle here if I can just you know stripe it this striped triangle over this big one because you can tell that this big triangle here going all the way to that side yeah ne the emotion go get a gram before it and go by sending it does it means in this courtesy one agnanki gapela you do these things to try and maintain your focus at times it helps because certain diagrams can be quite busy and then they create a bit of a situation so you know here ah there's an intermediate step i need here because if i'm looking at two triangles with a common side to them it means they must be similar so they didn't ask it they want it as part of the solution 
So now you can start by saying in triangles, say P, R, Q, and triangle P, W, Q. What is the story there? We know that angle P is common. Ne? Yeah, angle P there is the corner angle. Is common to both these triangles. We're trying to prove a similarity. Second story, we've already established that this angle Q1 is equal to angle R2. That was the 10 chord theorem. So we can go on and say, well, we started with P, R, Q, so we're going to say R2 is equal to angle Q1. Why there we have a 10 chord? theorem okay that's wonderful news of course if you prove two sets to be equal because other sets may not necessarily form a very nice connection because I mean you can tell you that q1 plus 2 for the big one should be equal to w2 and 3 for the other one I mean sorry w3 for the other one but you see the connection is not quite clear so you don't worry you can just say therefore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can say it so you can say therefore angle R Q P. I'm just trying to avoid those subscripts, but you can use them. It's still okay. It's going to be equal to angle W3. This one is nice because it's just one number. Again, what do you say? These are the remaining angles, or you can say sum of three angles of a triangle. If you've proved two sets to be equal. There's no way that the other one is not going to be equal. Therefore, again, triangle PRQ is similar to triangle PWQ. What is your reason? Angle, angle, angle. Or you can write the word equiangular. Not a problem. So this implies what? Now we can use their sides in proportion. So we can start with the big one that we said. We can say PQ over now pq on the big one the red outline one is opposite that angle r2 but angle r2 is equal to q1 of the smaller triangle this striped one which side is opposite that is that wp so essentially pw so the sides in proportion are the ones that are opposite equal sides in those triangles of course sometimes some people uh, find this very useful how you, you you phrase them I really don't care at times because I know whenever I construct my proportionality I always use the sides that are opposite the equal angles because those are the sides that are going to be in proportion because I just want to be able to plan my way the way I want the way it's going to be a bit more direct more direct all right so the other side now that we want we know that well we have a PR here which obviously belong to the other one PR over PR is opposite that big angle there Q1 plus Q2 which itself is equal to W3 for the other one and which side is opposite W3 is QP or PQ so let's say PQ as they said again that is complete because we just need two sets there these are proportional sides in similar triangles. Of course, you've already made your nice heading, which triangles you're talking about. If you did not make a topic, then you have to state those triangles. Ne? For simplicity, just in case you are losing it. And therefore, there we are. Then we can make our final conclusion that PQ because PQ times PQ is going to be PQ squared is going to be equal to PW they started with the PW this time multiplied by PR which is exactly what they needed us to prove so it's done so four marks in the bag now where are these four marks this is the main, the main area the main area um, the 10 chord theorem seems to be you know what they seem to like a lot um yeah 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 maybe re bringing that answer but the answer is already there maybe the mark is somewhere else i don't know 
doesn't matter anyway. But we are done here. There's our four marks to say. Thank you very much for such a nice question that needed us to plan our way without being pushed in that direction. So that was a nice question. Write down a triangle similar to triangle PSR. Where is PSR? PSR. So it's this black triangle you saw. That's the triangle that they are talking about. That they are talking about. Now I am talking about it too. Because if they are talking about it, why must I not talk about it? If it is the topic of the town, then I want in in that topic. Mm -mm. So that I can also see for myself. I don't want to be lied to be told things that are not true because you know what someone is believed to be whatever they believe that someone is anyway just being silly guy so that is the triangle so which one is similar to it well how will we prove similarity in this fashion so we already proved something here that that angle is equal to that angle and this angle is in this big triangle but that angle is in this triangle. So this means it's this black one and this little one here. Nah. Because already there is that angle is equal to that for the big one. And yet this angle here is common to both. P1 is a common angle. So that is essentially our story now. So if we can prove two sets to be equal the third pair will definitely be equal all right although it may not be very clearly linked but this one is clearly linked how you know that this s1 plus s2 is corresponding to that t2 and that t2 is equal to that angle opposite angle of a cyclic quad but these ones are corresponding because of parallel lines so effectively these angles are directly linked as equal so do you see when you work your magic, it connects a few things for you. So here they don't really care. So this is similar. So this triangle is similar to triangle. We can say PWS or PSW, whatever. And the reason is because they are angle, they are equiangular. There was nothing else that we used. They were equiangular, but they didn't care to ask you that question. They say. You know what let's just give you one mark guess if you can even if you didn't provide a reason it's fine but now that you know you just do it okay now hence prove that PQ is equal to PS well let's look at this one PS is common to both this triangle and the black one over there so that means we need to express their similar sides they are proportional sides, sorry, so that we can get this guy squared. And if this guy squared gives us anything like this, then we simply equate the two and when we take the square root of their squares, they will be effectively equal. So we can say here, fine, from above here. So um, we can just simply say here in triangle, PSR and triangle, PWS. Of course, we've already proven similarity. Okay, they, we already assumed or we were made to say it, but yeah, whatever. So we can just simply say now, we want PS of the B, big one, PSR. Ne? PS is opposite that angle in the big one, but this one is equal to that little S1 in the smaller triangle, and which side is opposite that is WP. So we can say here PW as they put it equals great. Now we want something that is going to be over that for the other one so that we can get our PS squared. So now which angle? Already now you have a guide that you want PS for the other small one now to be on the denominator. Now PS is opposite this angle and this angle is equal to that big one S1 and 2 so the side is going to be RP or PR so this is definitely going to be PR over that PS 
okay because those are the sides opposite equal angles again what I'm going to say I'm going to say proportional sides in similar triangles these ones are similar because that statement is right above us and then we cross multiply there therefore we know that PS squared is going to be PW multiplied by PR ah is it not the same we can say therefore P Q squared is equal to P S squared. Now, you can say each is equal to P W multiplied by P S. And uh, therefore, oh, I hate that therefore, P Q is going to be equal to P S. I mean, that's when you take the square root sign. So you've proven that. Three marks. Of course, you get your marks there. You get a mark for getting this one over here and then of course here the link the final one is already evident so there is a three marks and then of course of course guys this is how you score those 11 marks I hope this was not too bad of course it was just a long question I don't like to do these small questions like this because I feel like I'm not doing anything but for those who like these little short pieces, there it is. So that was the question 10 of the Freistadt Weiskende uh, Examen, right, examination. Uh, is it examen? I think it's examen, something like that. It's Weiskende. It's Weiskende. Mathematics. Maths. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed that paper too. It's a pity I could actually have slotted this one into that other video, but yeah, the, the battery life of my camera couldn't carry me through. But I can tell you something. You must have seen those of you who really follow the channel, which I'm forever grateful because it feels like it is all worth it after all. Um, you may have noticed how I answer these questions. I don't just answer haphazardly. And uh, the idea is to try and get you to doing a similar thing. It doesn't really have to be exactly the same, but find your own way of doing things, but let it be systematic. Don't be haphazard about things. Uh, because for you, it matters more than it does for me. I can be haphazard if I want. I don't get marks for it, for this purpose, of course but you guys get marks for it. So this is why I make every effort to try and give you a rather linked and logical pattern of working so that you adopt the same because that way it makes it easier for whoever is marking your exam paper to really follow you, okay? They can even feel for you when you are losing it, but you've got the idea, you know? Because if you've convinced that person that you know what you're talking about, but it was a matter of technical issues, you get a bit excited at times, you get a bit stressed, and then sometimes some digits, as you could see, I'm trying to write it too, and then there's a five that I write, because I'm looking at a five, at times my brain is just, you know, drifting apart and all that, so it happens to you as well, and you may not have enough time to go and look that up and, and, and correct it. So someone may look at that and be like, okay, I mean, the student is clear. The direction they're headed in is essentially one that was going to lead them to an answer had they not made that small error. That can be made up for, come on, you know. So you want those people to sympathize with you when they need to. You don't want them to be like, ah, this one is already haphazard. It's all over the show. Nothing is just logical here. Remember maths and physics. A logical subject so if you don't express your logic in them you already are failing the subject because this is the key to even you know participating in the subject you have to apply logic everything has to be logically connected everything has to follow a systematic approach not a haphazard approach you don't just jump in and throw things you 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 you, you know you unravel things, you roll your carpet, you know, you unroll it, you don't just throw it, okay? Alright guys, otherwise, 
of course for you who is already in metric and you are already facing your finals it may be difficult for you to adopt that approach i'm not saying do that but all i'm saying is if you are a grade 11 student you happened to bump into these videos and especially this one that i'm saying this thing in it please do yourself a favor try to adopt a systematic approach of doing everything including your theoretical subjects answer them systematically especially if you're going to pursue a degree in medicine or anything like that trust me to thrive at the university when you're doing medicine you're going to need to be logical you're going to need to be systematic because you get failed for just being haphazard not because you don't know you may have say answers to 80 percent of the questions but if you missed a basic examination point or you don't say something that is basic and very key to the rest they will fail you for that because they're saying you are careless you're going to kill people because mind you if you make a wrong diagnosis and start with the wrong treatment someone can die or can become disabled and then what are you going to say sorry i'm a human being why did you choose a job that demands you to be rather superhuman to some extent if you're going to place an excuse that you're a human being you're only trying your best we don't want that we don't want you to try no you can't try you have to do okay then we will see when something was beyond your human nature and ability we won't even need an explanation for it so all i'm trying to say if you want to survive medical training and you're already watching this video for some reason <laughs> please ensure that you are systematic and basics are clearly outlined you approach everything how they are connected because that's how you're going to make it as a particular practitioner say a doctor for that matter diagnosis look alike someone who has tb comes with a cough someone with a pneumonia comes with a cough someone with an autoimmune disease like um systemic lupus erythematosus they will come with a you know a chest symptom of some kind someone with a bronchitis will come with a chesty you know appearance when they come in and um, even someone who has an infection elsewhere like in the leg when they thigh in the buttock like areas far away from the lung they may come with chest symptoms are you then going to make a mistake and say hmm this is a TB and start TB treatment or this is just common cold and then it just gives you know these supplements they give and then we will see what if someone has a heart that is failing and then blood I mean fluid is pulling in the lungs and that's why they have a cough that will run a temperature as well they will look like they have a pneumonia but actually their heart is failing so these are some of the things that will need you to be a much wider person in terms of approach at the same time very concise in your steps because whatever you need to do as you do things you're ruling out other things to narrow it down to almost the answer and then of course when you conduct an extra investigation be it you're pulling bloods to send to the lab or you're ordering a chest x-ray to prove that there is actually pulmonary edema there or there's a big heart on the chest x-ray i mean before you even go for echoes and other things you can actually do a few things within your reach to make a formidable diagnosis and from understanding the diagnosis which of course even the confirmation of those test results will still be your interpretation those results are not going to interpret a damn thing for you so people who treat results never treat any patient because those patients get complicated they have multiple complicated histories medical advice from this and that you never know where they are going why because someone has not done their job properly because from high school already they were erratic about doing things they just got there because i mean the system is not trying to fail you but at the end of the day i wish it becomes a bit harsher when it comes to your organized you know strategies towards answering questions all right guys enough of the nonsense i was just trying to give a bit of an intel into where you're going with this so it's not only to serve a purpose for now it's to build you for your just you know next future because it's just next door now it's not so far away anymore all right guys um i hope you liked the video you're gonna give it a thumbs up right 
and then you're going to share it with your friends especially the little bit of you know I will keep dropping some little pieces of what I know and my experiences and then of course um, you may consider subscribing if you have not because trust me this is just the beginning I'm only scratching the surface here when I'm doing this you always have a starting point right but we're going to escalate things in this channel they will get to levels you will never believe but yeah we'll just let it come to us we're not gonna rush anything but there will be more trust me and it won't just be for matrix but I will always try to center this around matriculants because I think that is the key step for anything that I am interested in contributing towards but like I said guys please 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 um, do not limit yourself to this channel eh? I have faults of my own and certain things I am not able to explain in a way that you can hear better so there's someone who is also in this platform who probably will do a better job than I can so you may want to keep your your pool of you know go to places a bit much wider opened but at the same time maintain the knowledge that you've been trained to retain and put it to practice you will succeed all right guys i'll see you in the next video whenever that will be but for now bye bye